Hi and welcome back to the follow-up video regarding our 3D metal printed notebook water cooler. Uh, it's already sitting inside the notebook, there are uh, certain steps left to do, like some soldering work uh, to attach the pump, but I'm very curious to see the outcome performance-wise of this thing. And yeah, I think let's just go and see how it turned out. This video is powered by the web hosting provider and experienced data center operator Hetzner with its hosting products for private and business clients. The recent AX51 NVMe server offers ASRock Rack mainboards paired with the strong Ryzen 7 3700X 8-core CPU and 64GB of ECC memory which can be expanded to 128GB if needed. The server is equipped with fast NVMe SSDs by default which grant fast transfer speed. Not only the SSDs inside the Hetzner servers are fast but also the provisioning time of only 10 to 15 minutes after booking. The entire rack design and also the cooling solution are developed in-house at Hetzner here in Germany and with 24-7 support, high-speed internet connection, DDoS protection and matchless price performance ratio with only 54 euros per month, you should absolutely consider their servers. Find more in the link in the description below. And here we have our 3D metal printed notebook cooler already sitting inside the system. This part right here is taking care of GPU cooling. We also have the VRM cooling and the memory cooling and here's the CPU area. The base or the, the basics for this cooler was obviously the normal heat pipe cooler which we took as our base measurement and also to make sure what kind of areas we have to cover cooling wise. And then the first step was the normal CAD work and then we did those 3D plastic uh, printing, just a normal 3D printing to make sure that it will eventually fit. It's made or divided into three parts. It's not like it broke off, but it was easier to just 3D print three parts individually and then mount them inside the notebook, see if everything fits. And it turned out that we had to adjust some small parts, but then eventually we were able to kind of make it fit inside the notebook, which we can see right here. That is our result with the cooler finished sitting inside the notebook and it's a hybrid idea or my, my idea was to have like a hybrid cooler. That's why I wanted to keep the fans inside and also the base structure of our notebook cooler of the original heat pipe cooler. You can see obviously you have this fin stack right here with those very thin fins. It has a ton of surface area. It's different for our water cooling block. It doesn't have such tiny or thin like fins but it will still have some kind of cooling and that's why I wanted to keep the original fans because the way it is assembled right now we have this internal pump sitting right here and there is a closed loop and those are basically our very tiny radiators those three areas and I guess the fans should have enough cooling capacity to keep this thing cold at least for some normal operation probably not tough gaming or benchmarking, but just for normal operation, surfing the internet, being on the road, doing some office work, this should be absolutely fine in theory. And that's why we decided to go for this tiny pump on the side to have a closed loop um, once you decide to completely close off your laptop. And then we have those quick connect fittings right here, which are or make it able to attach our external water cooling loop. We made a cutout in the case which you can see right here so it's still possible to use the original case except for this tiny cutout no modification had to be done to the notebook so far there's still some yeah some stuff we have to do obviously we have to get uh, current somewhere for our pump it's 5 volt a 5 volt pump you can also uh, use a 12 volt version we also have a 12 volt version right here but it's yeah it's quite loud even the 5 volt pump is yeah i would say it can be quite annoying but it should still be fine, but I somehow have to get some voltage to the pump. I will just use probably one of those USB connectors and try to solder it on on the backside right here. That's something we still have to do. In the previous video, I saw a lot of questions regarding our 3D metal printed cooler, which I want to answer quickly. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them down below. It's no issue. We can always have a third video about this topic if you have more questions and if there's more interest about this topic. First of all, what is the cost for 3D metal printing such a cooler? I paid personally 1500 euro, uh, which is already quite a lot, but it's also, I would guess, 50% of what you would usually pay because obviously we visited Parare and we gave them some exposure which is also free advertising for them that's why they uh, push down the cost quite a lot otherwise I would guess such a cooler would easily be 2500 or even 3000 euro could be even more I'm not exactly sure about that but it's definitely 
Not a cheap uh, experiment, but it's also covered by my Patreons. So thank you very much, Patreons, for supporting me and supporting such very expensive projects. And there's also a goodie my Patreon supporters will get. We made a 3D metal printed RTX 3080 keychain. When RTX 3080 is not available, might have might as well uh, 3D metal print our own. So it's just a RTX 3080 and on the back side it's a CNC milled um, their Bauer logo, which is quite cool. All my Patreon supporters already know about this and they already filled in their address in a form and they will get the, theirs within the next, I would say, two or three weeks, depending on how fast I can ship it and depending on their location. One more question is, what about the printing time of such a notebook cooler? In our case, it was more than a day, but it depends on the complexity and also the size of your cooler, depends on what kind of orientation you have to use for the 3D printing. We had to use like an angled 45 degree orientation, which is using the entire room of the machine and then it takes even longer. But it also gave us the ability to fill the rest of the room with our RTX uh, 3080 metal printed keychains. And then a lot of people were asking the question, if you finish 3D metal printing the cooling block, it is filled entirely with powder. And that is correct. There is powder everywhere inside and you have to remove the powder out of the cooling block. But you have to keep in mind, there is no humidity inside the powder. It's not like sticky, I don't know, flour or whatever, but it's just dry metal powder, extremely fine. So you can just turn the cooler around and just Make sure that all your powder is leaving the cooler by itself and if there's anything left inside, just use some air pressure and you usually can easily remove the rest of the powder. Even though the cooling structure inside is quite long, it's like 80 centimeters length, but still that was working absolutely fine, no issues there. And then a lot of people were asking, why did we even use aluminum and not copper? And the reason for that is more like a technological reason, because it depends on your laser type, what kind of materials you can work with, especially if you think about the rather cheap CO2 lasers, which you can buy on eBay, which you can use for like cutting plastics, acrylic. Even a 40 watt CO2 laser can usually easily cut through like this size acrylic, but if you use a very sh a thin sheet of aluminum foil, you cannot cut through. And the reason for that is that it depends on your wavelength of your laser. If the, the light of the laser is um, reflected or if it's absorbed. And you need a very high absorption rate. Absorption? Is that even the correct word? I'm not sure. But it has to uh, absorb the laser light, the power, in order to melt the powder. And for aluminium, it was the correct laser type, but using copper, it would reflect most of the laser light. And in that case, you would not be able to melt the copper. But it depends on your laser type. There are 3D metal printing machines which can handle copper, but the machine they had was only capable of handling aluminium and some nickel alloys and also um, steel, but not copper. That was the main reason. Otherwise, copper obviously would lead in a better performance. I already opened this special additional USB, which is sitting inside the notebook. And we all know that um, the auto one is ground or even the case is ground. We can probably use the case, which is a lot, it should be a lot easier. And the pin right here in front of my finger, that should be five volt. And that is probably the easiest source for our pump. I know a lot of people will hate again against my good old soldering iron, but all I can always repeat and say is that you should always use the tip as big as uh, possible and as small as necessary. If you have a tiny tip or a smaller tip for soldering, then it won't make your result better. Uh, it will just uh, make it harder to solder because your smaller tip can store less energy. And yeah, just use a bigger tip. It makes things a lot easier. Should be good to go. Attach both cables and also attach it to power. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna have a keyboard right now, but for the first quick test, it should be fine. Let's see. It seems like the pump is not running for whatever reason. Hmm, maybe not enough power on the USB. We'll have to try again. Yeah, you can probably hear it. The pump is running now. It's a little noisy. Yeah, those tiny pumps. Yeah, not uh, definitely not the greatest choice. Also, one issue is that um, I have to unplug this cable right here in order to make sure it's shutting off because uh, USB is always active even uh, without power. So if the system is shut down, I can just show you. Yeah, you can, hear, you can see it's powered off, but the pump is still running, which means that I would have to pull this plug right here 
or like add a switch somewhere, but for a basic testing, it should still be fine. Yeah, for mass production, if this would be a mass production project, then you would have to definitely find a pump, which is a lot more silent. But it was already a challenge finding something which is so tiny, but still has enough power to push the water through the channels. But let's go back and see what the cooling capacity says. You can see it's running and it's not even bad. It's pretty awesome actually. Um, the glossy display doesn't make it easier, but you can see the temperature is somewhere in the 60s. I just also found out that this is a touch screen <laughs> by accident. Um, we had one quick peak at 90 degrees Celsius, similar to what we had last time with the stock cooler, but now it's, it's quite a decent temperature. And also the boost clock, you can see it's always at about 4.5 gigahertz, right where it should be. That is a quite promising result. Yeah, the pump is annoying. The pump noise is definitely annoying, but for our quick test, it should be fine. And I'm very curious to see if there is already a performance impact. Stock performance in our 20 single was 454 points. 473, that is amazing. It's only 4% more than stock, but 4% is more than what I expected because our idea was to keep at least the stock performance with our hybrid cooling solution with the internal pump, but getting a boost of 4%, that is quite, that is quite awesome. Just for having the same kind of space, no additional like surface area, that is awesome. But let's try R20 Multi. Of course, the cooler is now nice and warm due to the fact that it has been running, I don't know, 10 minutes of R20 single. But let's see how multi performs. Stock speed was 2,889 points. Let's see what we can get as a result and what the temperature looks like. Temperature wise, I guess we're gonna be at a limit. It's already hitting 90 degrees Celsius on some cores, which will definitely mean temperature or power limit. But let's see what the result will be. Clockwise, we still have about 3.3 gigahertz. And the results, holy, that is, that is a huge boost. So even without the external water cooling solution, this is far by, like by far better than the stock cooling solution. 700 points, that is so much better than I expected. With the noise in the back, I have to tell you that I forgot to get my water cooling gear out of my old apartment, which means that unfortunately we, we have to divide this into a third part because it will take a few days until I can get access to all my other stuff from my old apartment to be able to get the water cooling equipment for the external water cooling. But there is still one thing we have to try and that is a 3D mark because in the previous video we also tested 3D performance to get an idea of the GPU temperature. And now I will keep this sitting I don't know, for like five to 10 minutes on my table, just to make sure that the cooler can get a little bit lower temperature because after R20 Multi, there is definitely some heat sitting inside the heatsink. And now in like 10 minutes, we will perform our, um, a 3D mic run and then let's see what the GPU temperature looks like. Temperature wise, I resetted hardware info. Previously, we had a peak temperature of the GPU with about 77 degrees Celsius and the max performance in time supply was 9,000 points. Sheik is also wondering what the hell this noise is? <laughs> what is this noise? Can you please make it stop? Uh, all right, let's check what uh, 3D mic times by says performance wise. That's definitely the area where this cooler has its issues. And you can see the score is about half as what we had before. Previously 9,000 points, now 5,500 points. Yeah, graphic scores are almost half. The first one is not bad, it was 50 before, now it's 40, but the second one was 55, now it's 26, which just means that it's getting way too warm and then the GPU is downclocking, just shows that it's not enough uh, surface area for uh, having a proper 3D load or gaming, which is fine. I mean, you can still use it for everything, just normal office work, but gaming definitely can't handle this situation. The only thing I forgot to show you is the temperature and it was a peak of 88 degrees Celsius while it was 77 before and that definitely shows where we have our issue with the 
yeah, hybrid cooling solution, which is fine for t 2D or like any kind of office work. It will absolutely work fine, except for the fact that this pump is so damn annoying. I mean, I would definitely have to look for an alternative doing this again, but next time in the next video, we can use the external water cooling solution. Then we won't have this annoying noise all the time in the background. But yeah, I mean, it, it worked fine so far, just cooling wise um, for 3D, it's not enough. Like gaming, it wouldn't work, but for anything like office work or just browsing the web, it should be fine. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye-bye.